The next step will be the work with the oil paints. What we want to accomplish with the oil paints is the deterioration of the paint. And we are going to apply them using different methods. First, however, we need to choose the oil paints that we will use. I have selected a variety. Two to work out the rust effects, which are these two, light and dark rust. And then another three to change up the tone. Normally we should include a dark one, a medium one and one light color. With that we have a range of tones, that's quite suitable. We will dilute them with thinner such as white spirit. This is the kind that I use, but you can choose another one. And I keep it in this container. And of course we will need a piece of cardboard where we'll put the oil paints. We add a regular amount because the oil will spread a lot. And we add all the colors to this palette. We'll mix them directly, as they come out from the top, on the model. Later, with the white spirit, we will blend them and create all kinds of effects. The brushes that we need and that we are going to use are the same as always. A fine brush and then some others that you have lying around in regular condition to work on the oil paints. We'll place the oil paints on the cardboard so that it can absorb some of the oil. And afterwards, we'll start working with them directly on the model. Applying them is easy, but what can be a little more complicated is to have the idea or the eye for combining them well and that you achieve that more or less the effects that you're looking for translate onto the model. We have the oil paints ready. We'll mix them directly with the thinner, we'll blend them a little on the cardboard and then we can apply them to the model. Let's take a look at how it works. So, you can see that I started to work on the turret. And notice how the appearance has already changed quite a lot. We can achieve this with some streaks and effects, such as rust and dirt in general. See how the appearance changes noticeably? Let's now start to work on the base and we will see how we can apply some of these oil paints. Let's get started. We're mixing them on the palette. And we are applying them as we deem appropriate. Remember to pay attention to and keep an eye on how they dry. We should distribute them and do our best to prevent them from leaving behind any stains or shadows that we don't want to appear. Later on, we will work on some other effects. The ideal way of doing this is when we apply them to moisten the entire surface in order to prevent stains or other undesired effects. So. For example, if we want to create a shadow that would resemble the rust effect on some panel or any part of the model, we apply the oil paint and then simply using thinner, we extend it over the entire area. Afterwards, when it dries, we will see the result. And for example, to create some dripping effects, we will apply them and we will also use a darker color and clean our brush. Now we need to use sweeping movement of the brush while periodically cleaning the brush. until we achieve the effect that we are looking for. On the other side, for example, we could do the same thing. If we want to intensify the effect, 
we can add the oil paint as necessary. Well, as you can see, I'm applying the oil paint, making small lines with the paint. And now, what I will do is to use the thinner and redistribute and blend the paint. As I'm blending it, the paint is becoming less obvious. until we achieve the result that we are more or less looking for, which is more or less blended, less obvious. And if we remove too much of the paint, we only need to apply some more. After it dries, we'll see the final result, the final effect. The oil paint is easy to remove with the thinner and so what I can do is to insist a little more on the areas that I have worked on before. I have to clean up the areas where the brush could have left any remains. And we'll do the same thing from below. I'll grab the lighter colors because the part is darker. And we work with them the same way as before. All in all, the idea is to mix them and create different effects. Little by little we are filling the area and adding color to the model. For example, in the back area we change up the tone using washes. Cleaning all the areas that we have stained. And we continue working like this, step by step. In the front, for example, we would apply different kind of oil paints. Let's use the dark one, this rusty brown color. And in the lower part of the gun, we will create a darker shadow. However, when it comes to these areas, we will apply the lighter colors and we will blend them. And like this, we give the piece a different appearance. Afterwards, you'll see what it looks like when dry. Bit by bit, we continue working all over the speeder. I have continued to work with the oil paints and, as you can see, I'm applying them in a way that I believe I can achieve interesting results. I'll now show you what the result looks like. The thing to keep in mind is that you can apply the oils in different ways. I have applied them as streaks in some areas, as shadows in others, and of course washes and so on. Do you see? Here for example, I applied them around the reliefs so that we can achieve a somewhat dusty appearance. And like I said before, do your best to avoid 
stains or any other strange effects on the surface of the mold wall. At the top, we could apply the paint as streaks that will clean up. The main idea and purpose when applying this kind of paint is for the model to take shape, give it more color and contrast, and to do this, you simply apply the oil paint in different ways. So now, we have finished the work with the oil paints. And as promised, the appearance of the speeder has changed noticeably. As we said earlier, with the oil paints, we can deteriorate and weather the paint. Basically, the effect we achieve is much closer to what the used vehicle would look like. And the next phase will be the application of pigments.